In this lecture, we are just going to go over a couple of additional example problems. We're going to go over some of the problems from the homework. Um, it's going to be uh, Chapter 8's homework, the second one, number 6, and number 8. All right, so let's start with number 6. Um, in the figure below, a block of mass uh, of M is equal to 3.5 kilograms, slides head on <clears throat> into a spring of spring constant K is equal to 320 newton meters, newton divided by meters. When the block stops, it has compressed the spring by 4.5 centimeters, which of course is going to be 0 0.045 meters. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the floor is going to be 0 0.15, right? So this is our mu k value. While the block is in contact with the spring and being brought to rest, how much work is being done by the spring force? Okay, so first what we want to do is always write out all of our um, givens first, right? So we know that the mass is going to be 3.5 kilograms. Spring constant is given as 320 newton meters. X, which is our distance, um, that of <clears throat> distance of compression, is going to be 4.5 centimeters or 0 0.045 meters. Our spring constant, mu k, is going to be 0 0.15. All right, and we're trying to find work, right? So while it was what, how much work is being done? Okay. Well, first we know that the work is going to be our change in energy, right? I mean that that's what work is. When you do work to an object, you are giving it or taking away energy, right? So our work done by the spring is going to be its change. It's actually it's negative change in potential energy, right? And our change in potential energy would then be a, a final minus initial, of course, right? So the work is going to be a negative our final minus our initial potential energy due to a spring. So this is our spring potential here. Okay. We also know that initially there is no potential in the spring, right? Because the block is over here sliding in uh, to our spring. Before it hits, there's not going to be any potential energy in the spring because it's sitting at a relaxed state, right? So our initial potential energy is actually just going to be zero. All right, so really that just leaves us with our work due to the spring is going to be negative its final potential due to a spring. So that's one half kx squared. We can go ahead and plug in values for this. So you have negative one half, 320 newtons divided by meters, which is our k value, and then our distance, which is 0 0.045 meters squared. All right? And this value is going to be negative 0 0.324 joules, right? which is also equal to our negative change in potential. Okay, so this is the work done. Basically, this negative value is saying that there is actually work being taken out of, of, this, of the energy that this block has, right? It's being converted into um, energy in the spring. Okay. What is the increase in thermal energy of the block floor, floor system? All right, so we're looking at an increase in thermal energy. First, we need to consider, well, what, where is this energy being dissipated from? And in this case, it's because of the friction between the object and the floor, right? This little bit of friction here, right? So if we look at this, we know we have oops, some normal force going up, some mg going down, and then there's this frictional force that's going to be opposing the motion. Now we know that the normal force is going to be equal to mg, so our frictional force, right, because when our free body diagram, these, are, these must be equal to each other for it to cancel out. We know the object's not moving up or down. All right, so our frictional force is mu k times n. This is one of the equations we had for our frictional force. We can plug in mg for our normal force, so it's just going to be mu k mg. Right, so this is what the frictional force is. 
All right, now our change in thermal energy is going to be given by simply Fd. All right, change in thermal energy is going to equal our frictional force times d, right? Because there's no initial uh, thermal energy, right? Remember, this is going to be our, let's just say, our thermal final minus our thermal initial. There's not going to be any initial thermal energy, so we can just say that's zero. And the final is going to be the friction times the distance, right? So the amount of force that the friction is doing times the amount of distance, right? That gives us the energy or the work done or, or the thermal energy. Okay, so this is simply going to be mu k times mg times x, which is the distance of compression. We can go ahead and plug in our values. So we have 0 0.15 as our uh, coefficient of friction. 3.5 kilograms as our mass, g is 9.8 meters a second squared, and then our distance is 0 0.45 meters. All right, the value that we get for that. So our change in thermal energy is then 0 0.232 joules. All right, so this much energy is basically being given off as heat while the block slides across the floor. All right. So the last part of the question is, what is the spring, or what is the block speed just as it reaches the spring? All right. So basically, what is the speed right here? Well, um, you know, like before, your your book usually has something similar to, you know, the work done is equal to our change in kinetic plus our change in potential plus our change uh, in thermal or, or whatever else. Um, the way that I like to do it is I like to say, well, there's some initial point and some final point, and the energies at both of these points must be equal because energy cannot be created or destroyed. So I'll start off with E is equal to E. All right, and I'll just say this is point one and this is point two. We can say, well, we'll just sort of list off all the types of energies that it could have. So it's going to be have some kinetic, it could have some spring potential, I could include U. Um, you know, the potential due to gravity here if I wanted to as well, but the, we know it doesn't have any of that. Sorry, so that we have our thermal energy at the beginning point. You know, just say there's going to be some thermal at the beginning. And then we have at the end position, there's some kinetic plus some, possibly some potential and then possibly some thermal here. Okay. So this was our first point. This is going to be some final point or some second point. And we're trying to find a speed. So eventually, really, we want to find what the kinetic energy is. Now, we're talking about just as it reaches the end of the spring here, right? All right, so as soon as, basically, as soon as the block hits the spring. Now, the second point that we can use is actually when it's fully compressed, because we have some information about that. All right, so I'm going to call this point 1, and I'm going to call its compressed point 2. Okay? Um, when it's fully comp compressed, we know that it doesn't have any kinetic energy. So this is going to go to 0. It does have potential, so we'll leave that there. Um, and it's going to have some thermal. Now initially we know that it's going to have some kinetic right we can see maybe what the change in potential is going to be and then the change in thermal all right so here's what we would do all right so we're really trying to find what this kinetic energy one is right so we'll say oops so our kinetic energy one i'm just basically just going to rearrange this equation and solve for k Right, so you have your final potential energy minus your initial, or let's let's use one and two. Right, so this is going to be uh, two and one, and then we can have our also we have our change in thermal. So we have our one, excuse me, it's going to be again two minus one. Okay. All right, so again, I can sort of simplify this to our kinetic energy one is simply going to be the change in potential plus 
the change in our thermal. Right? And these are values that we actually already calculated in the first two steps. Right? We saw what our change, what we'll, we found out what our work, which is our negative change of potential. And we also found out what the thermal energy is, our change in thermal. Right? So at this point, we can just start plugging values in. So K1 is going to be 0 0.324 joules. Right? This is our negative, or this is our potential, rather. Remember, it was the negative of the work, so we get rid of that negative sign. And then we add. 0.232 joules, which is our th change in thermal. This gets us a kinetic energy of 0 0.556 joules. Right? We know that k is equal to 1 half mv squared. That's where we find the velocity, and we can solve for that. So solving for this initial velocity is going to be just taking this equation, rearranging for v which is just going to be 2 times the kinetic energy at 1 divided by the mass. So it's 2 times 0 0.556 divided by 3.5 kilograms and the square root of that. And you get our velocity at point 1 is going to be 0 0.564 meters a second. All right, so that's the speed that it would be going right before it interacts with the spring there. Okay, so let's do number eight. All right, so in the figure below, a block is released from rest at height d is equal to 36 meters. So it's released up here and slides down a frictionless ramp and onto a first plateau, which has a length d. So it slides down here, it goes across the plateau. When it's on the plateau, it has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.5. Right, so during this plateau, there's going to be friction. During this ramp, there's no friction, but during the plateau, there is friction. If the block is still moving, it then slides down a second frictionless ramp through a height of d divided by 2, and then onto a lower plateau, which has a length of d over 2, and where the coefficient of friction is again 0.5. All right, so you, again, you have friction here, friction here, but you don't have friction anywhere else. Now, if the block is still moving, it then slides up the frictionless ramp until it momentarily stops. All right, so then it might, it's going to momentarily stop somewhere up here, potentially. All right, so specify where the block first stops and give the stopping point of the block each as, or either as a distance along the first uh, second plateau, this would be a final stop, or as a height of on the ramp, on the final ramp. This would be the momentary stop because the block will slide back down the ramp. Okay. So let's start with figuring out where the block stops. Okay, first of all, we know that, we'll write down our givens, we know that the distance is going to be 36 centimeters, or D is 36 centimeters, and that's going to be 0 0.36 meters. We know our coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be 0 0.50. All right, so we need to treat each of these uh, legs of the trip basically individually. So first I'm going to figure out um, how the energy changes from this top point all the way down the slide to oops to the second point. All right so this is going to be down the first slide. Okay. We know that the kinetic energy that it has here or excuse me, the potential that it has here is going to be transferred into kinetic, right? So if I say that maybe this here is our reference point of zero potential energy, all the energy is going to go from here um, down. All right, so how would I relate these two? Well, you can just say that the kinetic energy is going to be equal to the potential, or this kinetic energy is actually just mgh. Right? which is also equal to 1 half mv squared. All right, so this gives us our first relationship with what happens um, between this first, this first ramp down. All right, now the next thing we want to look at is across this first plateau. So what happens across this first plateau? Well, we know that the kinetic energy now is going to be whatever its initial kinetic energy is minus the amount of energy lost due to the thermal energy, right, due to this friction. So our kinetic energy at this point, so I'm just going to say 2, let's call this 
one, two, three, four, and five. Right, so this was one. So this is our kinetic energy at two. It's going to be what we initially started with, right? And that's what we said in the first one. It's just going to be MGD. Now it's not going to be gaining any more energy because of gravity because it's going along a flat surface. And we're going to subtract off the amount of energy that's being lost due to uh, the friction, right? And in the previous problem we saw what that would be. That's just going to be mu k, uh, which is our force, times the normal force, times the distance, and in this case it's on a flat surface. So again, this is just going to be mu k mg multiplied by some distance, and in this case that's just d. Okay, So simplifying this, we know that mu k is 0.5. So really this is mgd minus 1 half, right? this is 0.5, minus 1 half mgd which is simply going to be 1 half mgd. All right, so this is how much energy we have right at the end of this ramp here. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is find the change in energy going down this ramp number 3, or the second ramp going down. All right, so we'll take our... So this is, again, going to be down ramp 2. Right? Or we'll just call it ramp 3. So this is 1, again, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I'll just call this ramp 3. So this is going to be the kinetic energy of 3. It's going to be whatever we started with, which is 1 half mgd, right, plus another 1 half mgd, right, because it's going to be going down 1 half of d, Basically, it's gaining that potential energy, right, which is mgd, and d is going to be 1 half d. So we gain an additional 1 half mgd, right, and then adding those together, this is just mgd. Okay, so basically, after we get down to this point, we're back to having mgd's worth of energy. All right. Now we need to go across this second plateau. All right, so we're going across... Plateau 4. So we're going to see where we start. All right, so we're again starting with MGD. That's what we had in the previous one. And now again, we're going to be losing some energy due to the friction. So we'll subtract off the frictional force times the distance. In this case, the distance is D over 2. So we're subtracting off mu k mg times d over 2. Again, mu k is 0.5, so really this is d over 4. So we're taking mgd and subtracting off 1 over 4 mgd, right? And that just leaves us with 3 over 4 mgd. Okay. Now the last thing we need to do is go up the next ramp, right? All right, we still have energy at this point. Now, if we at some point ended up with a negative energy, that means that we would have stopped, right? At some point, we would have stopped. But since we still have some energy, we have, MG, we have 3 fourths MGD worth of energy, we're going to be using that to go up, up this last ramp. All right, so this is going to be up ramp 5. All right, so again, we're comparing the energies. At this point, we have 3 fourths mgd. At the top over here, we're going to have, let's just say, mgy. Right? It's going to go, it's going to take all this energy we had and convert, convert it into mgy, where y is going to be whatever distance it actually travels up here, right? this vertical distance. All right, so we have 3 fourths mgd to start with, and at the end, we just have mgy. Right. Basically, it's saying we're converting all the kinetic energy into potential energy of mgy. All right. And at this point, we can just cancel a bunch of stuff out. Mgs are going to cancel out. So all we're left with is y is equal to 3 fourths d. So it's 0 0.75 times. And the d we're given was 0.36 centimeters.
I'm sorry, it was 36 centimeters. So this is just going to be 0.36 meters, right? And that would give us 0 0.27 meters, right? Or 27 centimeters, right? So it's actually going to come up now uh, to a height of 27 centimeters. Okay, that's it for these examples.